Hello, Jess here from Engine. Now you've probably been hearing a lot about Azure Synapse Analytics of late. And if you've been following my blog posts, you'll realize I'm a huge fan of SQL Serverless or SQL On Demand. SQL On Demand is the new capability allowing you to query the contents of your data lake with just plain T-SQL without the need to spin up uh, Spark clusters or a SQL data warehouse. Now, if you want to know more about SQL Serverless, I'll post a link at the end of the video where I walk through SQL Serverless in a bit more detail. But for this video, I wanted to focus on operationalizing data pipelines and how we can create pipelines that can take advantage of the serverless capabilities in Azure Synapse. So here I am in Synapse Studio. I'm looking at a query that's selecting the top 100 rows from a view. Now the details of this particular view aren't that important. It's actually querying about two gigabytes of data and doing some aggregations and producing some results which are quite interesting. So the important part here is that we're querying, querying raw data and we're producing some meaningful output. And that's really good. I can see I can run that query within Synapse Studio, but how do I operationalize it? How do I make this run as maybe new data arrives into the data lake on a regular basis? Well, perhaps you've used Azure Data Factory in the past. And if you have, you'll be pleased to know that Synapse Analytics has Data Factory built in or integrated in. It's actually known as Synapse Pipelines. So let's go and create one of those. If I go into the Orchestrate tab, I can select Add and create a new pipeline. And I'm going to name this pipeline Network Health. And you'll see that at the top, I've got some Synapse activities. I've got a notebook activity, I've got a Spark job definition, and I've got a stored procedure. And you might think, hey, great, I can run a stored procedure against SQL On Demand. Well, unfortunately you can't. SQL On Demand doesn't yet support stored procedures. I'm hoping it will very soon, but at the moment, this isn't an option. So let's uh, remove that. Instead, what I can do is I can take advantage of the fact that SQL On Demand can look like any other SQL database. Uh, and if by doing so, I can use the standard copy activity. So I want to basically use, take our copy activity, run a query and produce, produce some output in back in the data lake uh, in Parquet format. So let's go and configure our copy activity. If I go to source, I'm going to go and create a new data set. And rather cheekily, I can select this Azure SQL database. So as I said before, we're, we're, we're treating SQL on demand as if it was just any other SQL database. I'm going to call this uh, network telemetry and I am going to create a new linked service. So uh, this linked service needs to uh, be uh, a, a linked service which points to our SQL on demand instance. So let's call that SQL on demand. I'm going to enter the details manually. Now, let me just switch out to our workspace overview. So these are the properties of our workspace back in the Azure portal. You can see this option here or this setting here, which is the SQL on demand endpoint. And I'm going to copy this, flip back into uh, Synapse Studio, and I'm going to use that as the fully qualified domain name for my service. The database name is going to be telco demo and I'm going to use managed identity. Now, managed identities are really useful. Synapse workspaces come with a managed identity, which means that it makes authenticating with other services really easy. So let me go and test that connection. Hopefully it'll go green, which it does, and I can finish creating my linked service. And finally, I'm just gonna finish creating my data set. Now I need to specify, uh, you know, which query or what table I'm going to be uh, querying from SQL on demand. Uh, notice there's an option for store procedure. Uh, as I mentioned before, this isn't actually an option for SQL on demand, so we can't use that. Instead, I'm going to use the query and I'm going to select the query that I ran earlier. So let's put that as the query. Okay, so that's our source sorted out. That's our SQL on demand part of the puzzle. Now what I want to do is I want to take the output from that query and write that data back into the data lake. So I'm going to go to sync. I'm going to select new. I'm going to select uh, data lake uh, storage gen two. I'm going to choose Parquet. And I'm going to call this network issues. And for my link service, I can use the built-in link service that comes when you provision a new Synapse workspace. So 
if you remember, when you create a Synapse workspace, uh, the portal law will ask you to specify which data lake store you want to use as your default storage account. Uh, and when the uh, workspace is provisioned, it will automatically create you, create you a linked service to that storage account. And that's the one I'm gonna use here. Uh, one thing I just forgot to do there, so I'm gonna open that back up. So I forgot to specify the path. So I'm just gonna use the browse option, I think, so I can just navigate to where I want to go. I'm gonna put it in a fold in the data file system and I'm gonna pop it into output. So that's where I want it to go. I'll leave the file blank. Uh, the file path, if you leave a file path blank, you'll just get a default file name basically and a new one each time. Okay, so let's go back to our pipeline. So uh, now if I hit debug and run my pipeline, something interesting will happen. Uh, it'll fail. Now this is a currently a known issue. Uh, at the time I'm recording this video, this is a known issue uh, with Synapse pipelines. Hopefully it's gonna get fixed really, really soon. Um, I can actually get around this by uh, publishing uh, all my data factory assets. And when they finish publishing, I'm just going to run the pipeline as a fully published pipeline. There we go, it's got the green light. And I'm just gonna trigger my pipeline and I'm gonna run that now. Okay, so that is now running in the background. And I can see that running if I go to the monitor uh, area of uh, Synapse Studio, you can see, there we go, there is my pipeline running. It's in progress. And hopefully, if I refresh that, force refresh, it should be finished. There we go, and it's just finished there now. Now what I can do is if I go into the data hub and I go into uh, our data lake, uh, you can see there's my data output folder and that was the uh, that was the file literally just there that I have written. So as you can tell, if you've worked with uh, Data Factory in the par past, um, it's incredibly flexible. It allows you to parameterize things um, so you, it can run on, on a continuous basis. You can schedule it. You can, of course, build out your pipelines with, some, with you know, other activities that uh, maybe, maybe work from the results of our SQL on demand query. You can make it as complicated as you want to. But hopefully here is a good example of uh, integrating uh, serverless compute, serverless job processing within Synapse uh, using Synapse pipelines. Thanks for watching.